All right, good morning again, YouTube. I've had far too much coffee. Um, as you probably saw from my last video, we lost power at around 4 o'clock this morning. And uh, 4.30, 4 o'clock, something like that. Had to come out, get the generator running to power the house. We have a sump pump, and it... Uh, it, it, we need it to basically keep the basement from flooding. So as soon as the power goes off, no matter what time of day, we come out and set up the generator. So I figured I'm already up. I'll, I'll just stay up. So I've been up since like 4 o'clock this morning, which is... I usually get up at 5, so it's not that big of a deal. But anyway, that's, uh, that's what happened this morning. I guess a, uh, a transmission line got fried over at the substation and the substation was completely without power uh one of the i'm friends with one of the linemen and that's what i heard through the grapevine so that's apparently what happened today but um what we're going to do now is we're going to continue the series on the uh self-sufficient toolkit and today this is going to be one of those ones oh excuse me this is going to be one of those ones where I say it's probably going to be easier to buy these as a set. And, well, let's turn you around and we'll get going on it. So today, we're talking about pliers. And do you need all of these pliers? Uh, honestly, yes, you do. Um, <laughs> I know it looks like a lot, but uh, all of these here... With the exception of this one, you can buy as, and this one up, so, all right, I'll move this and I'll explain this. All of these will come as a set. All of these will come as a set. You can buy these two as a set, and you'd end up buying these separately. So, why do you need all of these? What is, what's the difference in... Why am I recommending that you get these? First off, you've got your regular pliers like this. There's a slip joint in them, so they get bigger. See how they get bigger? And they can get smaller. You're going to need these to grab bolts, twist bolts, uh, hold on to a nut while you're going out the other end with a wrench, or with one of those up there, the water pump pliers. Basically, you need these kind of pliers and these up here the water pump pliers, the channel locks, to undo and tighten and move different types of, of fixtures. Um, I have used these up here to do work on the cars, work on small engines. Uh, obviously, I use them for plumbing in the house. I use them for all different sorts of things. This little guy here, this little one, uh, I actually use that when I'm doing installs for um, the metal boxes when you're doing um, electrical. There's a little strain reliever on top, and you got to kind of undo it. you got to kind of twist it. This fits perfectly on it, and it fits right in my electrical tool belt, so I don't really have to carry the specific tool to do it. That works great for it. You've got these over here. These are locking pliers. And what I did was I added this little uh, eye bolt. There's a threaded bolt that's in here that you use to adjust the, uh, the wideness of the jaws, the capacity of the jaws. And what I did was I put that little eye bolt on there because when I was a firefighter, one of the things they taught us in the fire academy was you need to carry a pair of ice grips in your uh, bunker gear. And you need to have an eye bolt on it so that you can use them to... We used to use them to hold uh, locks. Like you'd put, a, you'd put this on a padlock and hold it. You'd have webbing tied to that. And you'd hold the webbing so that you're not holding this right up against it. And somebody would use a uh, K-12 saw to cut the lock off. What I find 
these really useful for. Obviously, I'm not cutting a lot of locks nowadays. <laughs> Uh, what I find these really useful for is I will wrap these jaws in uh, electrical tape and it'll it'll pad them and I'll be able to use that to pull up uh, sheathing if I'm doing um, if I'm doing a two-story shed or a barn if I'm doing metal roofing I can clip this onto the, the roof sheathing, the, the metal roofing, and just pull it up. Just pull it up with a rope. Uh, I always have rope in my truck. I always have cordage in my truck ready to go for just this kind of stuff. Uh, also to tie down any materials that I'm buying or any cargo that I have in the back of the truck. So why do I carry a small pair? Why do I have a small pair? These little guys, ride permanently in my tool belt and we'll get into tool belts at some point um these are perfect for any number of things what i find i use these most for when i'm doing carpentry is if there's a little bolt or something that i, I need to just twist or turn or i need to make an adjustment on something these are always right there, ready to go. They do have, and so do those, a little wire cutter in here. I've actually never used that. It's never been something that I, um, I needed to, mainly because in my tool belt, I always carry these here. These are end, nose pli end cutting pliers or bull nose pliers. And what I always use these for is I use them to grab nails and roll them back out. I use them to cut off nails. You can see I've beat on these with a hammer to get them to close. Um, I learned about these from uh, when I was working on a siding crew. It was me and this guy who was a union carpenter and we were working for a painting company and we did all their siding and their fascia board and everything. And he had a pair of these in his, um, in his, in his bags. So I said, oh yeah, those are, those are a very useful tool. I gotta go get those. And they, they're flush cutting. Like you can cut something flush with the top of a board. You can use it to grab the nail and not squeeze it all the way. And it'll dig into it and help pull it out. What I would say though, is definitely get ones that have this uh, curve to them because you're gonna use that for leverage. They make flat ones that really aren't that good. And I these, these are easily my most used pliers because of the type of work that I do. Uh, I've used them to nibble at wood, like for sheathing when I'm doing, um, when I'm doing the sheathing on a tool shed and it's just a little bit that's sticking out that's gonna screw up the trim and just <coughs> cut it off. Um, I love these, these are, probably my most used pliers out of everything. Moving along, you've obviously got another set of cutters, diagonal cutters. Uh, you can cut wire with them. You can cut rebar tie wire. Um, I was using these for a long time to cut chicken wire and hardware cloth because for some reason it didn't occur to me that I could just use the cutting wheel on my angle grinder. So these are a great option for that. They are very, very useful. You can pull nails with these, pull um, different types of staples, like the staples that you got when you're putting in Romex wire for like if you're wiring a, a new outlet into your house or if you're roughing in your electrical and you put a staple in the wrong place, you can grab it and pull it out. Um, honestly, I always keep these on me though when I'm doing electrical too. So I'm more likely to use these to pull it out because I'm more comfortable with them and, and just use them more often. This is more for cut. I use this more for cutting wire because sometimes you want, see how that's nice and thin. It comes to a point. You want to be able to get in there and nip something off in a box or in a tight space. When I was putting in the new dishwasher that we got, 
I didn't have these with me because I, I left them outside. I figured, oh, I'll be fine. I'll just use this, this set and this set. And sure enough, I needed them because I couldn't get the cutter on this or the cutter on this into the little area. And I, I went out and grabbed these out of my tool shed, out of my garage, and uh, they saved the day. Very useful. Diagonal cutters. This one here, as we're moving along, this is a pair of linesman's pliers. This is the workhorse of wiring and electrical work. It has a cutter right in here. It has these good jaws that you can you can grab wires and pull them. You can grab um, when you cut the sheathing off of Romex. You grab one of the wires inside and you pull it down, and that strips the rest of the sheathing so that you get a good uh, amount of the internal wires to be able to to do your wiring to a box or to a, a receptacle or a, an outlet or something. These also have this down here, which if you're using fish tape, you can grab the fish tape and really pull it with that and get some leverage on it. These here, linesman's pliers, were actually what I carried in my tool belt, my carpentry and construction tool belt for a very long time because the man who taught me how to do carpentry and remodeling and, and construction was my ex-father-in-law and that's what he had in his tool belt and they are incredibly useful it's it's certainly a good option you can use them to grab and pull nails you can use them to cut off nails they're not just an electrical tool you can use them for a lot of different things for a long time, whenever I was tying rebar, uh, which was infrequent, but it was frequent enough that I did it, um, I would use these to do the rebar tying. I actually have a, uh, another pair of rebar tying pliers that I got specifically for it because they're, um, they got a little spring in them and they got a bend in the handle. They're much more comfortable to do that with. But these are a good all around set of pliers. You really need all of these pliers but if you were only able to buy one at a time buy these first we talked about that it's just a regular set of slip joint pliers use it to grab things twist things there's no wire cutter in it it's pretty much just for grabbing nuts or bolts and holding on to them while you're turning the other side a pair of needle nose pliers you can see the tips are all kind of chewed up these are great for getting into small spaces. These are also great when you're doing electrical and you're going to make that little fish hook at the end of the wires. Just put it out, just grip the wire in there, twist it, and you make your little bend like that. These particular pliers, these particular needle nose, I actually use to set up all the wiggle wire in a greenhouse. Wiggle wire is what you'd use to hold the, the greenhouse plastic in. And I was working for a farm down in the southern part of the state, and it was wiggle wire day. So I brought these. They were they're always in my they were always in my toolkit, and uh, my toolkit was in my truck. Brought these with me, and for about 10 hours I was pulling wiggle wire all day, setting up greenhouses. And they they work great. Obviously, they have a cutter here. See, it's got the cutter in there. You can cut wire with that. You can cut um, little finish nails, stuff like that. Also has the fish tape puller, so you can get the more leverage that you need. Um, these are going to be what you use when, set, like I was talking about with this, when there's an area that you need to get into that's really kind of small and difficult to get into to grab something, you'll be using a pair of, ply a pair of needle nose pliers. Finally, um, these aren't really pliers. They're kind of like a multi-tool, kind of like an everything tool. This is a set of wire strippers or electrical multi-tool, or an electrical multi-tool, I think they called it when I bought it. Um, you can buy a specific wire stripper that's got like, it has all sorts of crimpers and stuff in it. I couldn't find mine and I knew I was gonna have to do some wiring 
on the, um, uh, what is it? I just talked about it. The dishwasher. So while I was buying the fittings that I needed at, over at the Home Depot over in Johnston, I grabbed these. Um, it's got a little spring in it, so it'll stay open, which is, I don't really like that, but I don't care. You've got a cutter right here. You've got needle nose pliers here, but they're not as thin. See how they're a little bit wider? See how they're a little bit thicker? You still need a pair of needle nose pliers. These here, you go down, you have, so you can strip all the different grades of wire that you'll need. These little guys here, these are cool, actually. You're gonna have to use machine screws when you're setting up uh, wire boxes, when you're setting up receptacles, when you're setting up switches, stuff like that. There's a box that all of that is in. And there's these little machine screws that sometimes they're too long. You thread one into this, it's a threaded hole. It's a threaded hole in there. You thread one into it and then you get it to the length you want and you squeeze it and cut it and it cuts it not only cuts the little machine screw but it re-threads it like a like a, a tap and die kit so i would certainly recommend buying a pair of these i would recommend buying these as a set Cobalt has them. Obviously, there's a Cobalt uh, from Lowe's. Home Depot has the same thing. I would say buy these as a set. Buy a set of small, of small, medium, and large water pump pliers or channel locks as they're, as they're known. Because you're going to be turning fittings with those. You're going to be doing plumbing work with those turning nuts and bolts i mean there's purpose-built stuff for that like wrenches and sockets and we're going to get into that but if when you when you're setting up the plier section of your self-sufficient toolkit i would say buy this set buy that set and get a big pair of vice grips put that little ring on the end so that you can use them to pull stuff and Give yourself a little bit of extra space. You can use them to bring stuff up and down. And buy a little pair like this. Buy a little pair of ice grips. It doesn't look like much, but if you're doing a lot of carpentry work, if, you, if you're wearing a tool belt a lot, you're going to have this on you, and you're always going to find a use for it. There's so much that you can do with this little set that you wouldn't you wouldn't think that you can do, but... When you need a pair of locking pliers, it's right there with you. And apparently Little Sweet agrees. Little Sweet! So, this is the plier video, the, the video on pliers. And uh, I would say with this set of pliers, with these basic pliers, you can get quite a lot of work done. You can do quite a lot of home improvement. You can even work on your vehicle with some of them. Um... What these, the locking pliers, the vice grips are really good for is a bolt that's just stuck. Get, get a pair of these on there, you know, tighten it or loosen it and then tighten it onto the bolt so that it locks on the bolt. That's not going to round off. That's, that's going to, that's going to dig in and that's going to really make it easier for you to unscrew that bolt. Another thing with these here is you see how this, see how the jaws have a regular jaw like that, and then they have this crosshatch up here? What I find these useful for in a remodeling situation is, say you've got a screw that's completely stripped out, and you can't get it out with a, with a screw gun, with a screwdriver, whatever. Open this up, adjust it until it fits on the head of the screw, and you can lock it. You can twist the, the screw out like this. You can pull the screw out like that. Once you have one of these on you in your tool belt or especially in your, your self-sufficient toolkit, there are some tasks that can only be handled by vice grips. You'll be glad you have them. So it sounds like this is making a good amount of noise there. I got to go check their water. 
I hope you enjoyed this. I hope wherever you are, you're comfortable and that God is with you. Thank you.